Hello and welcome to Complicated to Simple. I'm Robert Seth and I'll be your host for this video on how to tune up your browsing experience. Now this video series is all about tuning up your computer so you may be wondering why I'm making a video about tuning up your browser. Well tuning up your browser is part of tuning up your computer and many people mistake a slow internet connection or a slow running browser for some problem with their computer when it's really just settings in the browser. So that's what we're going to go over today, how to set your browser for maximum speed and productivity. Just a note before we get started, this video is appropriate for Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, and even Mac because these browsers that we're going to talk about today will work on all those platforms. And just another note before we get started, I highly recommend Firefox. Now I'm going to show you how to do this procedure in Firefox, Google Chrome, and in Internet Explorer just because you may have one of those. But again, I highly recommend that if you don't use Firefox that you begin using it because it's much more secure, it has more plugins, and it's just a better performing browser. Now, I don't recommend that you take the other ones off your computer if you have them on there because no browser is perfect and it's really a good idea to have more than one browser on your computer so that if for some reason what you're looking at doesn't work very well, say in Firefox, that you can switch to another browser. Okay, so let's get started. There are basically three things you can do to speed up your browsing experience. The main one, which is quite easy and is also very helpful if a program you've installed has taken over your home page, is to change your home page to either a blank page or to something like Google that comes up very fast. The problem with having other things as your home page is that when you start up your browser, if that website that is your home page doesn't respond, it can take quite a long time before your browser figures out that it's not responding and then let you use it anyway. If you're interested in your browser just going as fast as possible, the best option is just to, to use a blank page. And that way your browser won't check with anything. It will just come up instantly and you'll have use of it. I actually prefer to have a page like Google come up for several reasons. First of all, I'm usually going to Google to research something, so it saves a little bit of time. Secondly, especially when I'm at home, I never know if the internet is even up. So it's a very quick way to find out because if Google does come up, then you know that your internet connection is live and you're free to browse. Sometimes I may sacrifice a little bit of speed using this option, but generally Google is very fast and comes up right away. And I think the trade-off is worth it. You'll have to make that decision for yourself, but for now, let me show you how to change these settings. So go up to Tools in your menu on top, click on Options, and in the page that comes up is your options for setting your home page. If you want a blank page, you can just leave this as it is. You have a choice here. You can show your home page, a blank page, or show Windows tabs. Just leave it on blank page if you want to set a blank page. If you want to set a home page, then go ahead and set it to home page. And then down here in the home page field, you can type in whatever you want. So if I want to start on Google every time, I just type in www.google.com, say OK. And then whenever I click on home, then Google is going to come up as my home page. It will also come up each time you start your browser. Next, we'll do Internet Explorer. So in order to change the Internet Explorer, go again to Tools and then to Internet Options. And again, the first place you'll come up to is the home page screen. So if you want to use a blank page, just click on Use Blank Page and it'll go to blank. Or if you want to have a home page, you can click on Use Current and then again you just type in here what home page you want and that's what will come up every time. And like I said, this is very valuable because a lot of programs that you install will try to change your home page to go to their site. Or sometimes you'll download something on accident that isn't good for your computer and it'll try and take over your home page. This is where you go to change it back. Be sure to click Apply and OK so that your settings take effect. 
Lastly, I'll show you how to do this in Google Chrome. So let's bring that up. To change this in Chrome, go to the little wrench up in the right hand corner of your screen and select settings. After you click on the wrench, select settings. And this will bring you up to your options screen. Go to the appearance area. And if you want to make sure that your home button is accessible all the time, so no matter where you are in your browsing, you can get to it, make sure that this show home button is checked and that will put the little home up here on your screen so you can get to it easily. To change your home page, go to change right here. And this is where you type in what you want it to be. If you want it to be blank, you'll have to type in about colon blank because Google Chrome does not give you this option. If you want to change it to anything else, just do what we did before. Change it to Google and then and say OK. And then from now on, when you click on Home, Google will come up. It will also come up each time you start your browser. The second thing you can do to help your browsing experience go faster is to actually clean up all the temporary stuff that the browser itself stores each time you go on the internet. Every time you get on your browser, unless you're in private browsing, everything you do is recorded someplace on your computer. So the history of where you went, most pages that you visit are saved so that the next time you go to that page, it brings up the page that's saved rather than the actual page on the internet so it goes faster. When you log in somewhere, that login is saved. Um, everything is saved. And the problem is that that saved information can start taking up a tremendous amount of space on the order of gigabytes. And your computer is always looking at this and going through it whenever you're browsing. So if you have a lot of information stored there, every time you want to go somewhere or do something in your browser, it's going to search through that and really slow your experience down. Fortunately, most browsers give you tools to clean up all this saved information so that you can streamline your browser and decrease the workload on it. So let me show you where those tools are. Again, we'll start with Firefox. And if you go up to your menu items on top, go to Tools again, and then go to Clear Recent History, and you'll be presented with a page that will have all your options for cleaning up your browser. So you can also do this for a period of time. So if you say um, somebody gets on your browser or on your computer, and they're one of these people that can visit 200 websites in 20 minutes and you just have this ton of stuff on your browser that you're never going to use and you don't need it you can say okay I want to clean up everything for the last hour, two hours, four hours, today, whatever so that's an easy way to do it too but if you're not going to do that if you want to clean up things that you've put on there are some things to, to watch out for here and by the way, if your list doesn't show up here, then just click on details and it will come back. Now let's go through these items so that you delete the things that you need to delete and don't delete things that might be useful to you. First of all, browsing and download history is just a, a list of the places you've been and it's, it's a record of everything you've downloaded that's still there. And that's the thing that's going to take up the most space. Same with offline website data. Anything that you've downloaded or any pages that you've said I want to look at offline, um, that's going to be saved there too. Now, I don't typically remove form and search history because I want to have a record of all the searches I did. And this speeds up the process when you can just go down through your search history and bring up a search that you did before. Also, if you decide to, to do a search again, then you forget that you've already searched for it. The, your browser will, as you type, it will bring up suggestions of what you searched for and you can just select that search again. Um, cookies, these can be good and bad. They're, they're used to keep track of where you've been, but they also are used on websites to show that you have been there. So like, let's say you're going to a restaurant website that serves alcohol and they won't let you come into that website and tell you 
um, verify that you're 18 or 21. Uh, once you've done that, a cookie will be put on your computer so that now they know and you don't have to go through that verification again. Cache is what I was telling you about where it saves uh, a version of a page and it prefers to go to cache instead of to the active um, website page. And this can be good and bad. One of the problems with this, if, you're, if your browser starts acting kind of funny and you can't get the current page, then that means your cache needs to be cleaned out. So just go in here and you can just check this box and leave the other ones blank and clean up your cache very easily. Active logins, I don't like to remove because this is when when you log into a site and Windows asks you or your browser asks you, do you want to save this login? And you say yes. If you remove these, then you're going to have to do those all over again. I like to also save site preferences because this particular item saves your preferences for individual sites. So for example, if you say you don't want to allow pop-ups in general in your browser, but you come to a site that you do want to allow pop-ups on and you say that, it saves that preference there. One thing I should mention before we go is about this item, the first item, browsing and download history. This is also the feature that when you begin typing in your browser someplace you want to go, it will bring up suggestions based on where you've been and if you are wanting to go someplace you've been before once that item comes up you can just select it if you delete browsing and download history that feature will be gone until you go into that site again and it's put into browsing and download history again so if you really enjoy that feature i would suggest that you don't delete your browsing and download history or maybe just for a period of time but just keep that in mind, that's what will happen. So that covers Firefox. Let's quickly go in and look at the other browsers. Um, these options are going to be pretty much the same in those browsers, but I just want to show you where they are so you can go to them if you use those browsers. We'll go to Internet Explorer here. And in Internet Explorer, you go to Safety, Delete Browsing History, and here's all these same options here that we had in Firefox. Then we'll go to Google Chrome. And in Chrome, there's a couple ways you can get to this, but we'll just cover one of them here. Click on the wrench again and go to Settings. And then go and up here to History. And you'll see your history. Now, I don't use Chrome much. That's why I don't have much history in here. But to go to the screens you've seen in the other browsers, click on Clear All Browsing Data. Don't worry, it won't clear it. It just goes to the Options screen of what you want to clear. So this brings up your Options screen, and you can select all the things that we did on the other browsers. Another thing that can really slow down your browser, as well as your computer in general, is Windows Updates. In a previous video, I told you about how programs that run in the background and are constantly checking for updates and that kind of thing can really slow your computer down. And I showed you how to stop those from loading up automatically when Windows starts. Well, the problem with Windows Update is it doesn't give you the option in that particular place. You have to go somewhere else to adjust how Windows goes and looks for its updates. So let's go see where that is and what we can do about it. So to get there, go to your Windows Start button, click on it, and in the search box, type in Windows Update, and it'll give you that selection up on top and click there. This is where Windows shows you all about the updates that it wants to install for Windows itself. So where the tab that we're interested in is going to be here where we want to change settings and you have several choices here you can install updates automatically which is what windows chooses as a default you can download updates and then choose whether to install them you can check for updates but then it lets you choose when to download and to install them or you can never check for updates now Anytime you have any of these top three checked, Windows is going to, on a regular basis, go check for updates. 
This is going to cause your internet connection to be very busy, slow down your browsing, and can slow down the rest of your computer too. It can also cause a lot of interruptions while Windows pops up screens in the middle of what you're doing asking you if you want to download these updates it's found or if you want to install these updates as downloaded. So this can become a pretty important issue, especially if you're using programs that are going to be adversely affected by this kind of interruption. So depending on the degree of interruption that you don't want to have to experience, you can change this to whatever you like. Another thing you can do is if you go and say install updates automatically, you can choose what time of day, or if you don't want it every day, you can choose, you know, however you want to do this, according to this. But if you set it for a time of day that you're not typically using your computer, then you can have it not interrupt you. Problem is, if, if you don't have your computer on when you're not using it, then that obviously won't work. So I would recommend that you if you're doing something critical, just have it, just set this to never check for updates. And then when you're done, go back in and change it to something like check for updates, but let me choose whether to download or install them. And that will be the minimal amount of interruption to your work. Um, if you choose to um, download the updates and then ha um, ask if you want to install them like this, then your internet connection is going to be very busy downloading very large updates and this can make your browsing seem like it's just standing still. And of course, installing updates automatically involves not only downloading these updates on a regular basis, but also it'll just start installing them when it wants to or when you have it set here. And if you're in the middle of something, it can be really annoying. It can pop up and say, okay, Updates have been installed, you need to restart your computer now, you know, and you could be in the middle of something very important. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned a lot. And if, as usual, if you have questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I really encourage this because not only will it help you to learn more, but other people will learn from your questions and the answers to those questions and it will allow me to improve these recordings and my products and trainings more and more the more I know what your needs are. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.